Now that Awesome X has defeated all the supervillains in the city, okay. it's time Xander Cruz got focused. Xander Cruz. Oh. You're Awesome X. Awesome uh, X, yes. Maybe read a newspaper once in your life. Screw it, shoot it. Bring it, you cyborg sons of bitches! Oh, come on, shut up, man. You ain't gonna die. Say the freaking word. <laughs> back to Owls Only, the Adult Swim podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Hope, and where'd you get brain chemical? I'm here with my co-host. Alex. And <laughs> so we're talking, today we're talking about a very important show to me. I think like, I would probably say this is like maybe one of the top like three shows that influence my vocabulary. Oh my God. Yeah. I was watching this and I was just like, damn, you've been saying that since you were 15. <laughs> yeah. Like this show, we're well, talking about Frisky Dingo, by the way. Oh yeah. Um, so this is the second show in the Adam Reed pipeline. It goes C-Lab 2021 and then they do Frisky Dingo for two seasons, which are basically just like two movies because each season is just kind of like each season starts out with a series of plot threads that they just keep on like pulling on and then it just gets like more and more convoluted and like fucked up until it gets to like this insane conclusion uh, they do carry over stuff between seasons but each season feels like its own contained like movie yeah basically like it doesn't feel like any other adult swim show at the time yeah season we, we watched all of season one i've never seen the show before um yeah. we watched all of season one and we were we're gonna start season two at some point. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll probably, we'll do, probably do two episodes. Yeah, this show is good enough that I I mean I I love C Lab. I don't want to claim that C Lab is that isn't good enough, but this show is important enough to me that I think it each season does each season deserves its own episode. Yeah, why not? Um, C Lab, it's good. It's not as like this is. I feel like this is his best show. Right. Um, Archer. Better than Archer. Okay, so I think. The first three or four seasons of Archer are as good as this, but I think that um, there are stretches of Archer that are just kind of like okay. Yeah. Where I think Archer, Archer is the Archer is more like okay sometimes when it's not like peak, but Frisky Dingo, literally every single scene has something that makes me lose my shit laughing. It is just like a perfect little piece of comedy. And that's why I think it might be like better than um, than Archer, honestly. That's why I think it's better than C Lab because there's a lot of rough patches in C Lab, especially after like Harry Gauze dies, yeah. and all that I, stuff. I have no like horse in the race. I've seen like five episodes of Archer. I was just curious. Yeah, but um, so this show was created after C Lab 2021 ends in like 2005. And so the thing about Adult Swim is, like, especially when, like, Lazo likes you, if your show ends, he's not going to – you're just going to get a new show, basically. He'll be like, what else do you got? And so <laughs> That's funny. they were working on – they were working on this show for a while. It was called Whiskey Tango 6, which is going to be about, like, a superhero group. Mm -hmm. And then the concept eventually evolves into, like, Frisky Dingo. And I kind of think – um it says that, like, on the Wikipedia page, that Killface was going to be, like, a main villain, but he was not going to be, like, one of the main characters. It almost kind of feels like before they started this show, they went through, like, the same development of, like, season one of the Venture Brothers. Because when they were making season one of the Venture Brothers, they were like, okay, so the Monarch is going to be one of many supervillains. But as they made season one, they're like, oh, wait, the Monarch is, like one of the best characters ever and so we they just want to keep on using the monarch because they like him so much did they collaborate at all the teams the two teams or Between archer but like um frisky dingo and Venture yeah Brothers? just in general like is there be any reason for the similarities no 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 i don't think i don't think they um i don't think they did there was something interesting though um the jg thurwell the guy who does the score for venture brothers which is like one of the best television scores ever right starting with season seven he started scoring archer and it's it's insane. It sounds awesome. That's cool. Yeah, but I think uh, also um, God, I can't stop yawning. Doc and Jackson said that um, they think Archer is the closest thing to like the Venture Brothers on television. 
but I don't think like that's interesting. Yeah, I don't think that they've ever directly collaborated. But I know that Brandon Small has Brandon Small was in this. Obviously, he's like the two interns in the first episode, which are like incredibly fucking funny. Oh, the soda starts off great. And then Brandon Small is also all over um, Venture Brothers. Like Brandon Small is playing a lot of characters on Venture Brothers, so they do have that sort of like connection between them. Yeah. And um, but I don't think like the seventy thirty, which is like C Lab and Archer. I don't think the seventy thirty guys collaborate with like Astro Base. That's- that's a, too much. No, that was a, that's a great start to the show. They just introduce Killface immediately. And they just show, like, what type of show. It's good. It's great. I fucking love that first episode. I think it's so funny. I do kind of notice, though, that um, with Killface, they they definitely want to make him more menacing at first and they also make him more unlikable at first because yeah. he's like he's like beating the shit out of like Valerie yeah, and stuff. Yeah, that, that was yeah, that was kind of weird. But um but I think they kind of realize that when Killface is just kind of like a pathetic dad, then it's a lot. It's a lot funnier. Yeah, he's just, he's just like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just like. I mean, he's he still kills people. Um, there's a great moment in season two. I'm not even gonna be worried about spoilers I don't because care. You're yeah, fine. I know you don't care. And this show has been this show has been out for 15 years, so I'm sure nobody else cares about spoilers. Yeah, any, but, anyone, anyone watching a, a episode of a podcast about Frisky Daniel is gonna have seen it. Yeah, there's a really great. There's like a character throughout the first half of um of season two who's like kill faces campaign 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 manager yeah and she's just like there all the time and she's telling him what to do and towards like the because they season two is kind of split into like um the first eight are like the campaign and the last four are just kind of like wrapping up the series yeah and so towards the end of like the first eight, she says something that pisses him off really bad, and she's like screaming at him, and you see Killface's eyes narrow, and he just raises up his gun and shoots her in the fucking face. Huh. And <laughs> it's very it's it's hilarious. Well, it's a, now now I'm gonna know what happens to her. Dude. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's a great scene, but um, I think that's also they they never really take that away from Killface. He'll still like randomly like murder people. Yeah. But he's well, definitely he's, he's the villain. Well, he's not the villain, but you know what I mean. I don't even know if he's the villain because um, he is like – Santa Cruz is an asshole. Yeah, he's one of the few – Killface is one of the few um, characters with like positive qualities because he is genuinely like a good dad. That's true. Like he cares – Some about, of my favorite interactions that they had in season one were with him and uh, Simon, right? Yeah. Yeah. He cares. He cares about Simon. Yeah, I'm awful with names, by the way. No, it's fine. He cares, he cares about like he cares about like I like um, when they're in the hospital and like Simon's got like the tiniest little scrape on his elbow and Killface has like the pipe jutting out of his yeah. lung and then he, he like wants the doctor to. Um, and it's like not a joke. It's not a gag. Yeah, it's he not... wants the. I mean, it, it is kind of a joke because he's got the pipe in it, but like it's he still he wants the doctor to treat. Right. Yeah, it's not Simon like sarcastic. Face. It's not sarcastic. Yeah, like he Killface isn't like you know being sarcastic because he does genuinely like love Simon right. that much. And there was a great arc in season two where. Um, Simon comes out as gay during his presidential. Yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, and this the the turns that takes and like the resolution to it is amazing. But um, but like Xander Cruz, I think is far less sympathetic. He's much more of like an asshole. Oh yeah, no, he's a dick. And so I think <laughs> um, I think that uh, Killface is definitely the more like sympathetic character sure. in that regard. Yeah. But um, this show was a huge show for me because um. I got into because like the five shows that I got into that got me into um, like Adult Swim basically were King of the Hill, Futurama, um, Archer, Aqua Teen, and The Venture Brothers. Did Archer show on Adult Swim? No, but Archer is an Adult Swim show. Okay. It's an Adult Swim show in my heart. Sure, no, I don't disagree. I, I just didn't know if it ever aired on it. It should have, but it didn't. Um, but um, so I was I was fucking I was, I'm about 13 at this time. I am fucking obsessed with Archer. I adore Archer. It's like one of my favorite things on TV. This is also when there was only four seasons out, so like Archer never made anything like kind of like mid-tier even though I still love all of Archer. But um Archer was just like I thought it was the funniest show I'd ever seen in my entire life and mm-hmm. I needed more of it. And so I would also just spend hours just on like Is that Is that where we got phrasing? Yes, Archer. Yeah. That is that is straight from Archer. I remember that. Um, I am on, I was just scrolling on like my iPad, you know, whatever, just like looking at, um, looking up stuff about like these shows that I love. And a lot of things that I saw was like, oh, if you, people were saying like, if you love Archer, you need to watch the show called Frisky Dingo. And, um, cool. yeah. And so <laughs> I, I looked it up and I'm like, oh, this show, you, this show is like two DVDs. They cost like, you can get them for like five bucks on Amazon. 
And so I just bought them one day, and I just, like, I bought them during, like, a snowstorm yeah. from, like, Amazon. I remember just, like, watching all of it, and I thought it was, like, the it was it just changed the way my brain worked forever. Something something I do is, like, if it's an adult swim show that isn't, like, American Dad or, or like, Family Guy or whatever, mm-hmm. I just assume that, like, not a lot of people have heard of it, which obviously is not the case. But it, it's cool that... That they were like, oh, you should just watch Frisky Dingle if you like Archer. Yeah, that's that's what that's basically like everything I saw. I was like, if you like um, Frisky Dingo, then just like, I'm sorry, if you like Archer, then just watch Frisky Dingo. And it's just Frisky. I, Frisky Dingo was kind of part of that second generation of shows for me, but it was so like found. It's so foundational. I kind of consider it like part of the first generation of those shows to me. But um, so yeah, the first season is just about like. Killface has built the Annihilatrix, which is going to pers- push the Earth into the sun. And, yeah, it's based. Yeah, and Xander, <laughs> and Xander Cruz um, wants to make Killface like an action figure so he can continue like paying for the x so they can keep hanging out. Because Kill <laughs> fucking love the x The x are amazing. You know, they made a spinoff. <laughs> fucking... Did they really? It, it lasted two episodes. I, do, I remember. Damn, it, I that's remember, cool though. I remember it wasn't that great. Aww, okay. Um, because the production company shuts down after season two of Frisky Dingo because they basically went bankrupt. Oh, okay. And so they, um, and so they shut down and. Oh, um, we still watch them. The Exical episodes. Yeah. Oh, I have a um, I have a. So we're gonna do a little bit of a merch corner here because I want to talk about the merch, all the merch that I have for Adult Swim shit because I'm just obsessed with it. But yeah, that's um, fine. I have a. I have a bootleg DVD that I got off eBay that's, like, um, back when Adult Swim used to do their own – do the build-your-own DVD thing. So it's, like, right. most of Perfect Hair Forever and then both episodes of The Exticles are Can't on it. Can't stand Perfect Hair. I, I like Perfect <laughs> Hair. But um, we'll t- if we do Gamusetu, we're going to talk about that a lot on Gamusetu. I, I think – okay, well, <laughs> we'll fix that. Microphone just <laughs> fell. Fuck. Sorry, guys. Um, They're not even going to know because we're going to – it's fine. Um, so, <laughs> where we were talking about like Perfect Hair Forever. <laughs> yeah, I said I didn't like it, and you said when we talk about Game of Sedu, we're gonna. Talk yeah, about we do. When we do Game of Sedu, we'll talk a lot. I about liked it. Game of Sedu. What I watched of it. Well, Game of Sedu is a far better show, I think. Even though, I, even though I personally love Perfect Hair, I think Game of Sedu is uh, Game of Sedu is like a kind of a similar concept executed in a much better well, way. Like, it's a lot, a lot of it's a, it's charming. Perfect Hair, I I just didn't like it. I'd have yeah, to, I'd have to rewatch it. It's been Perfect, years. Perfect but... Hair is very much. Um, Perfect Hair is very much an anime parody made by, like, Gen X. Yes. But Gemu Sedu is an anime parody made by Max, who's, like, a massive fucking weeb. And so it's just, like, you, it it works better as a parody of anime because Max has all of that in his brain. Is he, is he Gen Z or Millennial? He's Millennial. Yeah. Um, I keep forgetting we're still young. Yeah. We're very young. but Like, um, rel- like relatively speaking? Yeah. But, yeah, so, like, Kill... Killface wants to push the earth into the sun. Xander Cruz wants to make him an action figure. And it just kind of, it's just kind of about like marketing, which is fun. It's about like marketing and it's about like billionaires, how shitty they are. And it's, yeah. a, and it's about like health insurance too. Like none of the characters it's, have health insurance. It's it's a good show. Like they, they just poke a lot of fun at like concepts like that about like how billionaires are assholes yeah Yeah. it's surprisingly leftist for i mean there's still a lot of like early 2000s adult swim humor in it which does not age well nope and which (laughs) may i would not blame anybody if it turns them off from this show but for what it is i think it's surprisingly leftist in how it's just about like you know this billion these fucking this billionaire asshole is just kind of like ruins everybody's lives and nobody has like health insurance like there's um kill face has got a pipe jutting out of his lung and he's like arguing with stan who who like sprained like his ankle and stan's got like getting wheeled out on like a wheelchair yeah. and stuff like that like it's just um like sin has to go to the unemployment office and stuff like that even though she's like a fucking like cyborg from space it's it's very venture in that sort of way right. i think yeah, well, that, that's how a lot of, back to the show having humor that doesn't age well, that's how a lot of, like, mid-2000s, like, center-left commentary was. Absolutely. It just wasn't as aware as yeah. we, not as we, we are now, but, like, like as, 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 yeah. as, like, center-left comedy is now. Yeah, but, um, so it's, it's very venture in that way. Because Venture Brothers is also about that because – but I think Venture Brothers – the key difference between this and Venture Brothers is that Venture Brothers takes like a, definitely a more like serious approach to this. Whereas um, Frisky Dingo will like if, – if 
they get tired of a character, Killface will shoot that character in the face and they're just gone. Frisky Dingo is just a massive shit post, pretty much. It was awesome. Frisky, yeah, Frisky Dingo is much more of a shit post. It's like Archer, but unhinged, is basically yeah, the way to I don't describe really it. Yeah, that's how you describe it. It's. it's like at one point they just end up like slaves. Basically. Yeah, they get they get they get enslaved at a sweatshop and they're both blind. And there's a point where they're just like wandering naked through the sewers after like escaping from um, after escaping from like the sweatshop and stuff. And it's just that's one of the things that I really love about Frisky Dingo is that it's kind of like um, when you watch it, you're like, how do how did we get here? And that's also something that I was saying. That, um, when Stranger Things 4 came out earlier this year, yeah. I remember watching Stranger Things 4, and there's a part in it where, like, these characters go to, um, you know, like, the, you know, like, the, um, the kid Dustin? Um, yeah, I've never seen Stranger Things, but I know, you know, who, you know, I know who, who Dustin that is. is. I know who that is. And so, like, Dustin has a girlfriend who's, like, a Mormon. <laughs> and she lives in like like actually like an actual Mormon yeah okay. and she lives in like Utah and there's a part where like a bunch of characters who are like situated on the west coast need to like find Eleven or something and so they like they go to like this Mormon house and they're like dealing with like her parents and stuff and I'm watching this and I'm there, I like that's going on Hopper the like the the um the David Harbour that one guy he's in Russia like he's in Russia in like a gulag and I'm watching this and I feel I'm, like I knew that happened I feel like I heard that that happened <laughs> Yeah, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, this feels like Frisky Dingo. Like that's cool. Like the, the way that the way that because like, I'm a, I'm a huge Stranger Things defender. Like I a lot. I think that it gets a bad rap. I think the first season is genuinely great television, and I think it does get it does get marginally worse every season. But I still enjoy it a lot. That's how a lot of things are. But um, I th- but it's so funny because like when because St- Stranger Things is so huge and there's so much going on with all these characters and like because it's it, it is it really does feel like Frisky Dingo where it starts off at a certain point and then just goes off in so many crazy fucking directions that you kind of feel like how did we get here? Yeah, I had no idea. Like like at one point in Frisky Dingo, Simon is hanging out with that like kingpin while they're doing like torpedo Vegas fights or some shit. Yeah. Oh, I love torpedo Vegas. Yeah, it's just like like from episode. From episode one, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, and season two goes even like harder on that. I think that's cool. But also, I because like um season two does that does continues a lot over from season one, but it kind of like it builds on those threads while introducing a lot of like new ones. And also, um, have you ever, have you ever seen Arrested Development? You've shown me a few episodes. I don't remember any. Of that is a the show is very Arrested Development, and Archer is also very Arrested Development. The fact that Archer kind of like. Jessica Walters' character on Archer is just her character on Arrested Development, but she's, like, a spy instead of just, like, a real estate, like, mogul. Right. So, um, Adam Reed definitely is, like, he, he was definitely huge into Arrested Development, and you can definitely see it in Frisky Dingo, but I think Frisky Dingo does it better than Arrested Development does, even though I love that show, too. Yeah, you showed me that show in, like, 2016 or something. I don't, yeah, it's, I don't, I don't it's, it's a great show. I love Arrested Development, but I do think that I kind of like, I definitely like Frisky Dingo more. But, uh, I I like I'm glad we watched it. I was like we mentioned in the last episode. I was gonna watch it over the course of my having the flu. Yeah, and I never did because yeah. I had the fucking flu. But I, I'm glad I, I'm glad we sat down and watched it. It was really fucking good. Yeah, um, there's a lot of great characters. So there's the, there's the Exticles, obviously, who funny. everybody loves. It's just a frat. Oh, oh I, this is the, <laughs> this is the thing I was because one of the things. Because the big thing about this show is that it very much influenced the way that I talk, and like a yes. lot of the things in this show are just stuff that I've that I've just like said to you for like years. And one of the, the one I was th- trying to think of earlier that I couldn't come up with was um, when they're like they're watching like Mitzi and Verl in the third episode, and one of them is like. I wish I had someone like her growing up. The other one goes, "Dude, save her for group." Yes, dude, you say that all the fucking. I say that. <laughs> All the fucking well, you used time. To say Boosh and or cacao. I remember that. One. Yeah, I remember saying I said that all the time. Like verbatim. Like yes. Boosh and or cacao. That's in season. I think that's in actually in season two. I was about to say because I was waiting the entire. Once I once I realized they were saying cacao, I was like silently waiting for them to say that. They say it in season. They say it towards the end of season two. Right. But um, there's another big one for me is a lot of the stuff that Watley says is big for me because I think Watley's voice is really fucking funny. Watley just in general is a very enjoyable character. Like, like, um... I love Simon. Simon's my favorite character. I love Simon. He's funny. When, like, the seagulls attack him, and he's like, but I gave you breadcrumbs! Yeah. Like, that's, that was a big one for me. You know, you, that's like a voice you do. So yeah, like, yeah. No, I do, I do the Wat, the Watley voice has been incorporated into, like, my vocabulary. Like, another big one is, um, 
when like because Wally kind of leaves the show halfway through and he's like he's because he's just in the ocean yeah because because the guys from Holland are chasing him right but um yeah and so it, it like they're kind of doing like kill faces like yeah I bet he's dead and then it cuts to him and he's just like fighting the shark from that Sea Lab episode yeah yeah that was season one. Yeah, the, but I'm saying that happens in season oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. He's fighting the shark, and he's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I put that was we because we had, we had just watched the other episode on Tuesday. Yeah, the Sea Life episode with that shark in it. Yeah, and he's fighting the shark, and he's like, "Stop it!" Like that's that's you something that. that's something that I say like all the fucking time. Yeah, and I pointed out I was like, "That's the exact same shark." Uh, like, what's what's the word? Entity. It's it's the same shark drawing. That's it. Yeah. Like it's the same shark asset that they use. Um, asset, that's the word. Because, like, there's a lot of stuff like that in this early Adult Swim stuff. Like, the shark that's the main antagonist in 12 Ounce Mouse shows up in, like, Space Ghost and Aqua Teen and Sea Lab. That's cool. Yeah, because, like... Yeah, you told me that. The shark from 12 Ounce Mouse is a drawing made for the original Sea Lab 2020. Hmm. It's in, like, the intro for Sea Lab 2020. Right. And then it's just, like, a single frame that looks you weird. Did, you did tell me that. Yeah, and then he's, like, he's, like, old Kentucky shark on Space Ghost, and then he's in, like, uh, he's in, like, the an Aqua Teen episode in, like, season one, and they use him as, um, the shark. I need to, I need to actually sit down and listen to, to 12 Ounce Mouse when we, when we watch it for Mouse. Oh, we'll definitely do it. Or Zoo Day. Yeah. Sorry, Another sorry, thing, <laughs> the guy who voices the shark voices Kill Face and Xander Cruz, Adam Reed. That's cool. And I think that Adam Reed, because Adam Reed, I think, might be, I used to always say that H. John Benjamin is my favorite voice actor. I, I like H. John Benjamin. But I think it might be Adam Reed. Well, yeah, go on, finish with that, because mine's not related. Because, like, I love Adam Reed, so, I love his delivery so much, and, like, he most of his stuff is, like, really, really fucking funny. Like, like, like his Xander Cruz voice is the same voice that he uses for Ray, and it's kind of like a single octave higher than his normal speaking voice, and I think it's the funniest shit in the world. His voice for Killface is great, but something that he's great at with both Shark and Killface is that he can genuinely be, like, kind of menacing sometimes. Oh, I mean, Shark's Shark's fucking freaky. Yeah, like, um... Like, when there's, like, a monologue in season one of Mouse when Shark is describing, like the sensation of what it feels like when like a when like a head bursts in your mouth when you're eating it yeah and like it's genuinely like fucking like it's not scary it's genuinely like threatening and there's some stuff that kill face does in season two that's also like he's kill face so he can't be that threatening but like there's a really good scene where kill face gets pushed past like his absolute limit and yeah. when he decides he's fully gonna destroy the world <laughs> and like he it, it is kind of like he can he can be genuinely menacing with that kill face voice and i like it it's it's so like he's just such a good voice actor, you know. What were you gonna say? Ah, uh, Sean Benjamin. No, yeah, okay. So it was about how Xander Cruz looks a lot like Archer. Yes, Xander Cruz is Archer with um with Ray's voice basically. Right. And Archer was famously pitched um to the FX executives as Xander Cruz but a spy. Yeah, I but, mean, that's pretty much pretty much what he is. Yeah, but um. So is what what accent does Killface have? Is it Australian? I thought it was British. I always thought it, it was. It might be. I'm not because he uses he uses a lot of British words. Like he uses the word "sodding." That's in, true. In one scene, like he, I I think it is just like a really funny British accent so, that he does. So is Adam Reed American or British? I don't know. Adam Reed's American. Okay. Adam Reed is the most like if you hear him talking as like like I said, his voice is just Xander Cruz and Ray, but like slightly, like lower. But like slightly lower. And he's, he's just, he's from like North Carolina. So he just oh, has, okay. he's got like that, he's got that North Carolina accent that I think is like the funniest thing in the fucking world. Like when he's, I can't say I'm familiar. When he's got like, he's when like Ray's pointing the gun at Archer in that one club, he's like, you better put that back in your purse. Okay. Like I, that is the funniest shit in the world to me. And like Archer and Frisky Dango are just full of that. Yeah. You're going to kill me. Which one's Ray? Raise um no raise raise the blonde guy with the mustache. Okay, he's the he's the gay one. Okay, okay. Um, I also I love his character in Archer because um, Archer's thing is that Archer is very much like Archer will bully any male that is like near him, but he but like a lot of it is Archer because like Archer bullies Cyril because Cyril's like a sexual rival for him, but he <laughs> can't. He can't do that with Ray because he can't because like Archer is just like obsessed with like women and so like 
he can't he can't do anything like that with Ray, and so Ray has like an equal foot because Ray is also just as good of a spy as him. Yeah. And so Ray is often one of the only like one of the characters that is always an equal footing with Archer, and I think it's really funny and interesting. Like because Ray Ray is a great character. They they don't use him as much as they used to anymore because Adam Reed doesn't want to go in all the time. Right. But like I fuck I think Ray my, Ray might be my favorite character on Archer. He's he's wonderful. Yeah. Besides Archer, Cyril's the only character whose name I know. Yeah. So <laughs> they do they do a thing in the most recent season of. Archer, where they fake you out and they think that they make you think that Ray might have ac- actually turned against the main characters, mm-hmm. and I was, I was getting ready to like not drop the show, but I was getting ready to be really mad about I it. Feel like I was there while you were watching that. As you may have been, yeah. um, but thankfully they didn't do that because I thought I thought like, oh, Adam Reed doesn't want to voice Ray anymore, so they'll make him evil so they can write him out. And I'm like, I would hate this. <laughs> Don't do this, and they didn't. Thankfully, because I love Ray, and if they made him evil, it would break my heart. But, um, <laughs> so, speaking of great voice actors, Killer Mike is in this show. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, I knew who Killer Mike was before I even knew who Run the Jewels was, or yeah. even pretty much most stuff on, on Adult Swim. Killer Mike, who I, I fucking adore Killer Mike, he is amazing in this show. He is so unbelievably fucking funny. Like, Killer, he's one of the best characters. Everything he says is so funny. He's, he's good. Um, well, he's been in a shit ton of other stuff. Uh, was it was he on the pilots? Was he a character in any of the pilots? I think I think I know, um, I know Doom was right. Doom Doom is in Cheyenne Cinnamon. Um, let me think about the pilots. Doom is in Cheyenne Cinnamon. Um, that sucked, right? I don't care for. Some I people, can't remember if I like. Some it or people not. like it. I don't care for it personally. Um, what, was the, what was the fucking plot for that one? It was just like a pop star, but it was really like weird. I didn't like it. It, yeah. look, it kind of looked like Lucy, Daughter of the Devil. Um, Louise from Bob's Burgers was in it. The wonderful Kristen Shaw, she oh, was I in it. Her. Oh, I love Kristen Shaw so much. Um, I can't wait to do Bob's Burgers. That's gonna be really fun. But um, so we could do Gravity Falls too. We could do Gravity Falls. No, we're doing it. I fucking that, what, Gravity Falls is one of the only like, sh- like. Is it a lore tune? Yeah, Gravity it's Falls. It's one of the only like lore tunes that I like set set out to watch. Gravity Falls is like it's like the essential lore tune. I, fucking I love I Gravity think. Falls. I like Gravity Falls. I'm not as high in it as a lot of people are. I mean, I'm not like super engrossed in it, but I, I really a, enjoyed it. A lot of people are like, "This is the peak of Western animation." No, no. And I like <laughs> it, but I am always gonna be like a Steven Universe stand number one. Sure. I am wearing a Steven Universe hoodie right fucking now. Yeah. I am I am Steven Universe is always going to be my number one in that department. Um, I watched like fifteen episodes. Yeah, like twenty fifteen. But um, so yeah, Killer Mike is amazing. But um, he's just he's just so fucking funny in this show. Like everything he says is so funny, and he and they give him a bigger role in season two. When it's amazing. Unfortunately, they. Well, yeah, I, I thought he'd have a bigger role in season one with how you talked about him. I yeah. guess most of it's season two. Cool, because he becomes he becomes Killface's um, vice presidential nominee in season two. <laughs> That's and funny. It is the jokes they make with that are insane. Oh my god, I think I think you'll probably like season two a lot more than season one. I like season one a lot. Yeah, because season two, a lot of it is just Killface like campaigning. And so oh, yeah. no, that it's good. really funny. And, and like Takwil is there too, and Takwil is like campaigning with is like Takwil has to clean up his messes with stuff because Killface is just like a racist, and mm-hmm. so Takwil has to like go and like sue like the waters and stuff because Killface is an asshole. Um <laughs> Jesus. It's so I good. Lot, got, a, got a lot of thoughts on that. They do want <laughs> I actually have some thoughts on that. Is another joke that starts in Frisky Dango continues over to Archer. It's like a like a running f- phrase they use. Just I actually have some thoughts on that. Yeah. But um, another one that's kind of incorporated itself into my vocabulary. Not as much as the others, but I do say that can't like sometimes. That. Can't remember you saying that one. I think but, you're lying. But um, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> but yeah. So what are we talking about? Like uh, Tequil. Yeah. I love Tequil. He's amazing. Oh, they do, unfortunately, um, in, like, the second to last episode of the show, they do kill off Tequil, which makes me very oh, sad. Really? Yeah, Fucking because... spoilers, dude. But, um, I... But I... They kill off, like, almost every character in season two. It's a Shakespearean tragedy, dude. It kind of, it kind of is. Like, they kill off, um... Um, they kill off almost everyone. Like, like Killface, Sander Cruz, and Simon live. Valerie lives, which I love because I love Valerie. Good. Um, Valerie also goes on to become Pam on Archer, who's the, one of the best characters on that show too, and she's amazing on Archer. Pam. Is that Pam, a love interest? No, Pam is the um, Pam is like the blonde one. She's like the bigger one, but she's like a badass. Oh, I feel like I knew. I, okay, okay, she drinks a lot, right? 
Yes. Yeah. I love – Pam is a great character. I remember that character too. Because they start off and you feel like it's going to be really mean. So they're just like, oh, she's like, haha, like the fat one. But Pam is, is like a badass. Yeah. And Pam like beats the shit out of everyone. And Archer is like – there's there's like a subplot where Archer becomes like addicted to having sex with her. <laughs> and like huh? – Because like Archer is like Ar- – because like there's a running joke where Archer's like, I'm not going to have sex with you, Pam. You're gross. And then he has sex with her and he's like – this is the best sex oh I've ever had God. in my entire life. And he becomes, like, addicted to it. Okay. And he becomes addicted. <laughs> Archie becomes addicted to it so much that he misses his de- his, his maybe father getting murdered, which is, like, a huge plot point in season three. They go so much. Ar- I love Archer so much. I need to rewatch the first couple seasons I'll watch of it with you. It's so good. We, de- we definitely got to do it on here because Archer is an amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, show. I'll watch it with you. But, um... You know, Amber Nash voices Archer because, like, this is, like, the genesis of Archer. Like, um... Lucky Yates, who voices Krieger on who does, Archer. Wait, wait, who does Nash voice in this show? Um, Valerie. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. She also does other characters. Like, she does, like... I thought you said she voices Archer. No, she voices um, Pam on Archer, and then she yeah, voices... Yeah. No, um, I, I misheard you. She voices Valerie on Fisky Dingo. She also voices, um, the, the unemployed... Which, which, which one's Valerie? Valerie's the ge- <laughs> the one who shows up as the geisha in Okay, the that's, that's what I figured. I, like I said, I'm bad with names. Good, and, um... Good with faces. She also does the... the Amber Nash does the unemployment lady. The there's gonna be pickles yeah. if I get them. Like she voices, <laughs> she voices that. She voices that. She does a bunch of stuff like that. Um, throughout um, our, our Frisky Dingo. Sure. Um, Lucky Yates who voices. She, she's also Debbie, right? No, Debbie is a different Debbie and um, Grace Ryan are a different voice actress. Oh, okay. That's Kate Miller. Kate Miller who is married to John DiMaggio, aka Bender and Jake That's Jake it. the dog. Okay. Um, I which is really cute. I love that because like when Hulu tried to like Hulu tried to fuck over John DiMaggio for the the new Futurama contract. I remember that. Yeah. Um. She was like on Twitter being like, "Hey, fuck you. Pay my husband what he's worth." They didn't, but he went back anyway. But oh, that sucks. It sucks. But I think um, John DiMaggio. I'm sure he has like plenty of money, but I, I, they definitely should pay him what they owe him. But I John DiMaggio basically said that he came back because he, he described it as like um. Like, who, who the fuck else is going to do Bender? Well, yeah, he described that. He described it as, like, watching everybody go, get back together for Futurama and not being there. Right. Was, like, watching Thanksgiving dinner from across the street in the cold rain. Yeah. And so he's, like, because he, cause everyone who makes Futurama genuinely loves it so much. And so that's why he went back to it. How long did it get renewed for? Or is it indefinite? I think it's I think it's two seasons okay. of twenty episodes. No, I think it's one season of twenty episodes. They're gonna be split into two halves. And then they're gonna, they're gonna see what happens, or is it just gonna be that? I think they're gonna see what happens. If I had to guess, they're probably gonna do. I'm sure they're gonna do more. Right. Because um, they said that. Um, I like Future. I've never really watched it, but I like. We'll it. do it on here because that's a big one. Well, I've seen a good bit of it. I just it. haven't like sat down and watched it. It's wonderful. But um, Future. They're gonna. I think because what happened to Futurama is the because like Disney bought Fox, yeah, and all the lore tunes. I mean, not fuck, not the Fox tunes that are important are like Simpsons, Family Guy, Bob's Burgers, American Dad, Futurama, King of the Hill. Disney bought Fox, ruined everything. That is true. <laughs> um, well, I'll get into that. I'm sure on another episode, but um, so hold on, <laughs> you get water break. Um. So Disney buys so Disney buys Fox and all that shit, and so they're basically like, I think at this point because there's a Futurama got hard greenlit for revival. King of the Hill, there's something going on with it. I think they're trying to get more made. I'm not sure, huh. but Disney was basically like Futurama is the only cartoon like the Fox tune that that makes a lot of money that is not in production right now. Why is it not in production? Yeah, right yeah, now? I remember you framing it like that. When, and when that is that's this. a that's exactly what happened and so they're like make more of that for hulu and so more is coming out but i'm good for us <laughs> yeah i think it's okay for us i love futurama futurama i always say although i kind of think steven universe has overtaken futurama for me in the past couple years yeah. because my hard top two favorite shows used to always be venture number one futurama number two but steven universe has snuck in there i think it's venture steven then futurama but um I, Futurama is such a perfect show, and it—I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a, such a great show, and it ended perfectly, and it's had. So it's a time loop, right? Yes, it's had four perfect endings, and I think they keep pushing their fucking luck. You know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's kind of one in a million. They keep pushing their luck, and I think that, um, and I think it'll be good. And I'm—I'm an, I'm, I'm already like preparing for it because I'm already like getting super excited about it because I love Futurama so much. But I do think that like. 
I th- I would much rather see Gus and Wally. I would much rather. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would much rather see Moral Oral come back. You know what I mean? That won't happen. I do because I I think it could. I think Moral. You think it could? I yeah. love Moral Oral, but Moral Oral is getting an audience that Moral Oral is getting popular with the BoJack audience on oh, TikTok. I can see that. There is a there is Moral Oral TikTok that like that is a subsect of, of TikTok. Like Moral Oral is getting the BoJack okay. audience. And I think that is what's going to get it revived at some point. Like, if I had to put a place a bet on any um, classic Adult Swim show getting revived, it would be that's not already getting revived. It would be Moral Oral. Is Dino still doing stuff? Like, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. He just like made an album, I think. But um, good for him. Uh, no, I think I think Moral Oral is like the is like I think they would make that. But I do think I that, mean I'd watch it. So absolutely, but um. <laughs> I, I mean, I love Futurama. It's like I said, one of my favorite shows. I love Beavis and Butthead, and that just came back. But I do kind of think that um, it is frustrating to me because, like, Moral Oral was such a wonderful show, and they're building towards something amazing. And, like, Mission Hill, like, the Gus, do you know about the concept for Gus and Wally? Where it was, it was going to explore. No. Mich- I mean, I know Mission Hill. I don't know. I don't Gus know and Wally. The concept. It was going to be Mission Hill, but they shift the focus to Gus and Wally instead of, like, the four roommates. Right. And they would do episodes that would sort of focus on, like, what it was like being gay throughout, like, the 20th century. Oh, that'd be cool. Which oh, shows... yeah, yeah. It'd be, like, phases, right? Yeah, like, they would do ep- – like, it wouldn't be the whole show. They would still – it would still be, like, half, like, regular Mission Hill, but they would do episodes about, like, what it was like to be gay throughout, like, yeah, the yeah, 20th no, I, century. I do remember you telling me about that. Which is – Nothing would. There's nothing on TV like that. Yeah, that would be insane. That would be so good. Give it a few years. Yeah, but the thing is, um, I love that's such a good idea. But like, they're not gonna make that because there's we're just gonna keep gonna keep getting like Futurama and Beavis and Butthead coming back over and over again until we're all dead. You yeah, know what I mean? It's like you you always talk about how everything is just franchises and '80s nostalgia and. Yeah. It's just that concept, but for the turn of the century. Yeah, which I'm, I mean, I'm more fine with it because I think Beavis and Futurama are consistently good. And, like, I'm, those two are, like, my favorite things in the world, so I'm never not going to, I'm never going to say no to that. Right. But I do, every time they come back, I'm just like, man, I I just wish that, like, something like Gus and Wally could get made instead. Yeah, I mean, I I would agree. The only, the only show that I need them to keep making is American Dad. (laughs) I, yeah. If they drop American Dad, I need Hulu to pick it up. Uh, I think there's enough American Dad. I would, I would, nope. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too sad if the, if American Dad. Got Although canceled. you've actually sat down and watched all, like, I've watched seasons. all of it. I've I, watched all 350 episodes. I haven't. I've seen a lot of American Dad, but I haven't seen all of it. If I'd seen 350 episodes, I'd probably be tired of it too. I'm not tired of it. I'm still, I still like it, but I think it's not something like if they, if American Dad got a good ending, I'd be like, all right, cool. Like I, it doesn't, it wouldn't break my heart. If yeah, it fair. I mean, you can watch 350 episodes on repeat. And never, you never, yeah, get tired. never get tired. But um, anyways, so back to Frisky Dingo. Yeah. Uh, I th- Frisky Dingo is something that I don't want to come back. No. Because I mean, fr- I mean, I because Frisky Dingo ends with um, Killface, Xander, and um, Simon getting abducted by Killface's race and going to his planet. Yeah, that's the ending. Yeah. And season three was gonna be about like j- it was just gonna be set on like Killface's home planet, which sounds amazing. But I don't, th- you, I really don't think you can g- you can like fully get the band back together, especially because Adam Reed doesn't uh, doesn't want to do anything with that. He's yeah, like the whole show. How old is he? He's he's not old. Yeah, he just he's just done. He he's he just made Archer, which is like one of cable one of like the most successful cable right. comedies in twenty tens. So he made a shitload of money. Right. And he just lives on like a farm in North Carolina, just fucking bawling. It's awesome. Good for him. I know. He did an episode of the Adult Swim podcast, like the official one before that got cancelled. <laughs> and um he just he was they like Matt Harrigan went out to like his farm in like North Carolina and they just like talked for an hour about like, you know cool. they talked for an hour about him like Going through like the Flintstones tapes that we talked about on last episode. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, I need to revise my top three because I said my top three were Venture Brothers, Frisky Dingo, and Moral Oral. I am kicking Oral off that, and I am putting Joe Para on there because I Joe Para is my number two of Adult Swim. Yeah, I, I love Joe Para. It is. Um, we saw Joe Para. We did. We did. He was fucking hilarious. Joe Para. Yeah, we saw Joe Para do stand up. He was amazing. We were mad. He was like out of character or whatever yes i saw people on reddit being like oh joe Perry talked about cum i don't like that and it's like it's yeah, funny yeah because like the fucking delivery was great fuck you <laughs> he because one of my favorite because the one of because like the the joke they're talking about i'm pretty sure was like joe was talking about um how he doesn't like role play in the bedroom and he goes uh, when i come for the first time 
I want it to be as me. And that's that's a Joe yeah, Para joke. Funny. Like that's a joke that would be in the show, just like slightly more vulgar. And it's funny. Yeah. I love Joe Para. But um back to the topic of not reviving Frisky Dingo. I think I, st- stuff's allowed to end. Yes, exactly. I think stuff's allowed to end. Frisky Dingo, I think the reason why it's my favorite Adam Reed show and why it's one of my favorite shows ever is because it's so it's just it's, it's concise. It's twenty yeah, it's twenty five episodes of just pure just the funniest shit in the fucking yeah. world and i think that if they got more of, i think if more of it got made i don't know how far how, if it would be this high up in like my rankings of like adult swim shows right. but yeah it's so funny it, it just feels like it it feels like a youtube video at some at some points it's good yeah it's good it's great um what was it 2006 2007 yeah i kill yeah this, is good. this goes to 2006 2006 is an insane year for adult swim because like there's the Venture Brothers season two. There's Aqua Teen season four. There's this. There's Metalocalypse season one. And oral, there's right? Twelve Ounce, huh? Oral too, right? Yeah, or I was getting on Oral season two and Twelve Ounce Mouse season two. So like in a single night on Adult Swim in two thousand six. That's immaculate, bro. That is immaculate. <laughs> do you have um? Do you have recordings of it? I so I have one, but it's actually really fucked up and corrupted, and it makes me uh, sad. Well, just give another one. Uh, I can try, but those are kind of hard to come by. But, like, it's amazing because it is literally just, like, here's a new episode of Metalocalypse, Moral Oral, 12-Ounce Mouse, and Frisky Dingo in a fucking row. And also Aqua Teen in a fucking row. It is... You said Metalocalypse? Yeah. Oh, that's older than I thought it was. Metalocalypse is from this generation. Because, like, there's, um... Really? Yeah, because Adult Swim... Adult Swim shows, like, they, yeah, that, they have that insanely good foundation that we talked about. Yeah. But by, 2000, by the time 2005 rolls around... Everything that's not Aqua Teen is pretty much gone. It's yeah. pretty much ended. So they give all those guys, like, a, they give that entire, all those guys, like, a new show. So it starts, like, a new generation of Adult Swim. Where, like, um, Matt Malera, like, the Aqua Teen guys get to make 12 Ounce Mouse and Perfect Hair Forever and Squidbillies. So they, Squidbillies lasted fucking forever. Squidbillies is one of the longest Adult Swim shows. So, like, I've they, never watched an episode, I don't think. I like, I remember seeing commercials for it as like a six year old. Squidbillies is old. I love Squid. I I think Squidbillies is good. It's probably my least favorite Dave and Matt show, but I like it. Oh, uh, I think I think it does a lot of interesting stuff. That I, I don't love. think I've ever seen an episode for real. Um, it's it's good. I like what they did in the last season. They replaced the racist guy with Tracy Morgan. I thought that which was very is, funny. Which is awesome. But um, so it's like Twelve Months Mouse, Squidbillies, Perfect Hair is like um the next Aqua Teen generation, and then um. Well, and Aquatine then, went to when? Huh? Aquatine goes to 2015. Right. And and also it's back. So, like, the, 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 the oh, shorts. The, oh. They had the shorts in the movie this year. So, Aquatine is effectively back. I don't yeah. know if they're going to make more or not. They want to make more. But, um. Well, it can't be fucking expensive to make it. No, exactly. Right. Make more. Um. So, I. So. That's sort of the next generation of Aquatine. The Sea Lab guys get to make Frisky Dingo. That's their next generation. Yeah. Um. The Metal. And Metal Aqua. And the. Home movies, which is Brandon Small and Lauren Bouchard, branches off into Metalocalypse and Lucy, Daughter of the Devil. That's crazy. Yeah, that those that that comes from home movies. Yeah, nice. it, it Metalocalypse does come from there's and you even see that DNA of Metalocalypse in home movies, which I love. Yeah, like there are like um one of the characters in home movies just plays like guitar all the time, and you listen to it, and it sounds like Doomstar. Like it's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, but are so, those the guys who you showed me that behind the scenes clip of them just fucking with the guitar once, or are those Aquatine guys? I feel like those are probably the Aquatine guys because yeah, the, doc, guitar. the, the uh, uh, guitars are big on adults. That's swim. the only way you can describe that. They're just fucking. With, yeah, I guess more than one person can play guitar. A lot of <laughs> um, Matt Malero is infamous for his guitar playing. A lot of Adult Swim creators just like hang around in William Street, and, like play guitar all the time. Yeah, I mean, cool. And they just fucking they just fucking like shred on the guitar. It's it, awesome. It, I've never wanted to do media as a job or anything, but it sounds like a fucking wonderful place to have been exactly i'm obsessed with william street that's why i love fish center so much because it's just like you just get to spend an hour in william street i love it but um so fucking so yeah that's sort of like the next generation of adult swim i think and then they just kind of branch off from there like like because like the we love we're big we're huge fans of the heart she holler fucking love that show we're huge fans of what's what's the other i'm thinking face well, yeah, but that's that's from the Aqua Teen guys. I'm trying. Oh, to, I'm okay. thinking more of PFFR because we love. We like Neon Joe. Yeah, that is PFFR, but that's that's not that's more of like John Glazer through PFFR. I'm thinking about like the core comedy group, Xavier Renegade Angel. We love that. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen that. Anymore. You haven't seen Xavier? No. Uh, that's a big show. You well, love that. <laughs> yeah, well, like that's a big internet show. You've seen it. You've seen you've seen that. I'm sh- I'm sure I've seen bits. But um, we've seen uh, what's 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 the, what's that what's the fucking movie we watched? Final Flesh. Yeah, that we, was that was something. We're big Final Flesh. 
fan series. We love Final Flesh. Uh, I mean, it was it was interesting. Um, but th- those guys, it's worth a watch. <laughs> those guys made Wonder Shows in for MTV two, and the Wonder Shows is is an Adult Swim show. Yeah, and it's just on MTV two, and Adult Swim saw those guys. Show me clips of that. Yeah, and they were like, and it's kind of like. Grab from MTV and like here, make shit for us, and so that's how Xavier I, starts. I think it's funny that I've seen like the entirety of Final Flesh, and I haven't seen like Archer. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's funny. It's because a lot of our friendship is because a lot of the times you're watching something with me for the first time, and so we watch stuff like more obscure, like Archie Holler or Your Pretty Face. Yeah, we, well, that was your first time watching both of those, right? I've seen Pretty Face, but it used to freak me out. Even though, even when I was a teenager, yeah, it used yeah, to I mean, freak it's, me out. It's fine, it's weird. So, um, it only freaked me out because I used to be very terrified of the concept of hell, and so that right. that freaked me out to, to the point that I didn't want to watch it. But now that I'm an adult, and I'm like, oh, this is the shit that like people made up to force people to like stay in line and they don't care. It doesn't it doesn't freak me out nearly as much, <laughs> you know, like um. So now, like I, but like when I was a young teenager, I would still watch it. But I'm like, I don't like this. It gives me anxiety. I don't right. want to watch this. But we definitely watched the last two seasons of Pretty Face for the first time. I love that show. It is a fantastic show. That's probably one. I might do. like it more than Hartshe. Than Hartshe Holler. Yeah. I think I do really like Hartshe Holler. It's funnier than Hartshe Holler, but Hartshe Holler is a more um is more interesting with like the plot stuff. Oh, they have well, going yeah. On. I mean, your Pretty Face is a fucking sketch show, basically. It's very, it's very different, but um. Yeah, Frisky Dingo is so good. I love it. I love the extra gold. I love Simon. Um, I love. There's a the, the character Phil is huge in this season. Like Phil's like the guy with cancer. Uh, I re- yeah. Um, I love Phil. He's he, he's all over the season. He d- obviously, he, you know, he reminded me of who he reminded me of Dylan from Severance. I don't know why. Eh, I don't really did, see maybe it. Maybe just because he. Maybe just cause, honestly, might probably just the hair. Eh, yeah, it could be. Um. I love – Phil does get murdered in the last episode, though, so he's not in season two. But I forgot how kind of a huge part he plays in this. Um, Frisky Dingo also – I swear to God this show is an SCP because every <laughs> single time that I watch it, I somehow <laughs> find – I somehow find a new joke that I missed. I don't know how. But no, that's just how watching stuff is. No, because it doesn't <laughs> happen with any other show. Yeah. And, and every any other show, I, I... It's just, like, an exceptionally smart show. Yes, they pack... Because, like, there's a couple that I caught... Um, the two that I caught this time, when we watched it last night, that I um, didn't catch before, is um, when Xander Cruz shows the newspaper... That, someone shows the newspaper, it says Xander Cruz is missing. On the bottom corner, it says Cruz's parents still dead, which is funny. And Man, then also... Um, in the episode when Phil throws up on Killface's car and they have to like wash it out, like in the scene before that, he's eating cereal mm-hmm. and then Killface rent the car wash and Killface is he's really mad. He's like, he's like four bloody bowls worth. I didn't realize that he was talking about like four bowls worth of cereal, cereal not puke. <laughs> yeah, so full four bowls worth of cereal puke, which I didn't get. It's just like I hate puke. Every single. Like every single time I watch this show, there is, and I feel, and I've I've watched the show probably upwards of fifty times, honestly. Oh, crazy, actually. Over like the past, <laughs> I don't think I've never seen anything that much. Over like the past, no, that's not true. I watched all of Destiny Deoxys every night between third and fourth grade. Yeah, like over like the past ten years, I feel like I've probably watched Fisky Dingo at least like upwards of like fifty to one hundred times, mm-hmm. and I. And somehow every time I find like a new joke that I didn't that I didn't like catch the first time. It's an insanely dense. That's why it's one of my favorites because it's so densely packed. It's just it's a fucking amazing show. Um, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was fucking funny, and it really did feel like a movie. Yeah, and it's just this is like it's just like a movie. Like this. Um, it's even got the arc where they're like not friends anymore for yeah. a little bit. And... and the second one is just like it too. The second one's like the sequel. I think um, 12 Ounce Mouse is the thing that's literally edited together as a movie. Yeah. But I think 12 Ounce Mouse kind of works better episodically oh, almost. It's fucking freaky. It's freaky, but I it love it. Hard. I, I, remember tr- I remember trying to watch it last time we did Zoo Day. And well, like I watched it, but it was like really hard to follow. Well, the thing is, that's how it, I, I don't know the plot of 12 Ounce Mouse. Oh, word. That no one no no one truly knows the plot of Twelve Ounce oh, Mouse. Oh, it's just like things happening. It there is there they give you the information to put it together, and um, Hunter and I have gotten very 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 close to putting it all together. Like Hunter and I will spend hours being like, okay, they say this, and this fits together with this. That's fucking cool. And we almost that's why I love that show so much. Oh yeah. And we almost we it almost feels like we haven't put together, but like no one. 
fully knows what Tomat's mouse is about, except for Matt Malero. I'll let you. I'll let you talk about your merch more. Uh, when, when, did, when did you come across that DVD? Like, when did that get added to your collection? Tomat's mouse DVD. Yeah. I won that in a Twitter giveaway, actually. Yeah. And so you get it for free. Yes, nice. in fall 2018. That's fo- awesome. A year before that, I got the Australian version, so I'm like, I don't have enough money to buy the you still American. Have that? Yes. Okay. I'm like, I don't have enough money to buy the American version. This plays on my DVD player. This is good enough. It was to cope, basically. Yeah. And then a year later, um, Classic Swim, who's a very a great Twitter account, he did like a giveaway and he gave me the Total Mouse Mouse DVD because I won. That's cool. It was awesome. How'd you win? I don't know. It was just like a <laughs> random thing. Oh, it was just like you got your name picked from like people who liked it or whatever. Yeah. That's cool. It was great, but um, for merch merch corner for Frisky Dingo, there are like, there are two pieces of Frisky Dingo merch that exist. There's the DVDs, which I, which are probably like some of my most watched DVDs ever, and the first Adult Swim Kid Robot series has a very flimsy like kill face figure. That's like show me that sometime. It's like it's it's hilarious how bad it is. That's it's funny. That's why I want to see it. <laughs> it is like. The best way to describe it, it's like something you would get out of like a quarter machine at CC's. It is fucking hilarious. You um, you remember when? You remember when we tried to do this and we did the Simpsons podcast? And yes. You got us uh, like Simpsons figures. Yes, that Were was. Were those really also fun. Kid Robot? Yes, but that was. Like, the... I still have that. That's on my desk. Good. I love Kid Robot. I just finished. Um, I just finished getting all the season one, the series one of Futurama Kid Robots. Nice. And I'm getting so. Um, that was huge for me when I was younger. The Futurama Kid Robots, but I never had enough money to get them all. Are those the ones that you have on your shelf now that replaced Rick and Morty? Those are the big ones. Yeah, I got Rick and Morty ones because I don't want just yeah, totally, totally on totally understandable for right now. Um, but no, this these are like these are like the minifigures. Yeah, no, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I got those, and um, so I bought an empty display box, and I'm gonna fashion it into a background for the shelf. That's cool. So I'm I'm gonna like cut it into like a background for the shelf, basically that I'm that I'm like doing with this. Uh, our 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 merch shelves are gonna be so fucking epic. I, I mostly have like retro consoles and Pokemon, but still. Yeah, I have a I am very much a, a lot of Adult Swim stuff. I have a lot of those. Um, also, one thing I want to say on here. Um, every single media company rips ripped off what the Venture Brothers did with their action figures because the Venture Brothers, when they're when they're when, because the Venture Brothers was very popular on Adult Swim in like their um two thousands yeah and they were like okay it's time to make toys because like this is what happens That's when what you, you have, when you have cartoon <laughs> it's popular but they didn't want to make regular action figures so what they did is they made these bulky dolls with like felt clothing because that's what that's what action figures were in the 70s and they thought it'd be really funny to only make these the only toys that were available <laughs> and but so they do that's that funny. <laughs> they do that i have like a bunch of them and then like five years after that like a like nostalgia becomes so marketable that you go into target and you can buy like those kind of figures of like stranger things characters yeah and you, like star trek characters yeah they also did like a run of um, just old characters in general. They still sell that at the Walmart I work at. Yeah, exactly. That's Doc and Jackson figured that out like ten years before like most media companies did, <laughs> which is also a huge thing with the Venture Brothers because um, here we'll finish the, we'll finish this episode up by talking about the movie we just saw. I was about to say yeah, we got to talk about Megan. <laughs> we just we just we just came back from seeing Megan. It's a fucking good movie. <laughs> wonderful movie. But something I was thinking about during that movie is that the aunt I think her name was Gemma. Yeah. She is literally just Dr. Venture because – Yeah, she, he, he looked at me halfway through the movie and he was just like, it's just Venture Bros. Like she's <laughs> – which is also everything. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She is – You say that a lot, yeah. Yeah, she is just Dr. Venture because she doesn't want this fucking kid and she just like – she just wants to like do her stupid science shit and she wants to like make um, like a robot to take care of her kid for her. And she just like – she's just Dr. Venture. It's awesome. Although Do- she goes through an arc that Dr. Venture would take like seven seasons to go through with like yeah. one movie. But – um. Well, I mean, it's, it's a movie. Yeah, it's um great movie. It was good. I don't like f- slashers. I don't like. I don't like horror. I don't like horror. I, I don't like horror in general. The only horror I've ever really liked that I like will go watch again was is the VHS series. I fucking love VHS. The only horror that I really like is Adult Swim stuff, like Wan City, like this house people in it and yeah, unedited footage of a bear. Other, there's one other horror movie that I really like. It's about. It's the dude with Peach Fuzz. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's a guy who is who like lies about how he is dying of cancer, and he like has this dude come and record himself for his like unborn son that doesn't exist, like the son that he's expecting. I have no idea. What you're talking and he about. puts on the wolf costume, and he like does the peach fuzz voice or a song, and then he fucking kills him at the end of it. It's 
Fuck me, man. It's super good. Someone watching this knows what I'm talking about because it's like a big thing. It's like it's like a big movie. When did it come out? 2014, maybe. I have no clue what you're talking about. I will find it in two seconds. Keep go say what you were gonna say. But it's called Creep. What is it called? Creep. Never heard of it. It's fucking good. But um, no, my um, my taste in horror is very much just like I love unedited footage of a bear. I love um, like there's not some people in it. Um, Adult Swim also dropped their third movie and their first non Teen movie a couple months ago, The Fireplace, the Adult Swim U log. That was awesome. That's probably, I loved that. That's probably going to be an episode unless we unless I wanted I'm, I might just include it with the infomercials episode because it's just like a feature length infomercial. Yeah, that's gonna um, be a fun episode. There's a lot of commentary in that. Yes, I love the fireplace. That was really good. That is the third Adult Swim movie, the first non Teen Adult Swim movie. If you count like you know, like if you only count like William Street produced ones, right? Because I think that like Bob's Burgers movies, Adult Swim movie, Futurama, yeah, Avengers, Big Scores, Adult Swim movie, Bebop movies, Adult Swim movie. Um, speaking of one thing we were talking about a second ago, where um, we were talking about how like everyone on year one of Adult Swim gets like a second show. Mm-hmm. Um, even Cowboy Bebop has that with Samurai Champloo. Like I said that in the last episode. Like Samurai Champloo is well, like Bebop didn't start off as a Adult Swim at all, right? It started off. Yeah. Oh, it did. Bebop is night one. Huh. Night one of Adult Swim is Brack Show. Um, Aqua Teen is actually not on night one. Aqua Teen is week two. The show was made for Adult Swim, or just the English? No, show? no, no. See, the okay, English that, dub. See, that's what I was thinking. The English dub was made for. Adult Although Swim. I guess Samurai Champloo probably wasn't made for Adult Swim either. No, it wasn't. But the um, I have a I have a Samurai Champloo DVD set that I got from Second and Charles, which is a used DVD store. Um, yeah, I love that set. It is huge. We'll go and just fucking look at shit. It is huge. It is bulky as fuck. It is just like a it's because it's like six like little mini disc holders in one. Yeah. And on the back of it, it says in giant letters, "As seen on Adult Swim," which, which is really that's funny. That's cool. And I saw that. And I'm like, because I, I, that's one of the few anime that I've actually finished. I've seen like parts of it. I'm excited to sit down and watch the whole thing. It's a great show. I do. I think the first anime we got to do has got to be Fully Cooly because we can just sit down and knock it out in like six episodes. Sure. Fully Cooly, great. Uh, it is a wonderful show. But so um, do Bleach. Yes, we definitely do Bleach. Fucking uh, love Bleach. Do you can do a whole podcast on Bleach? Yeah, I'm sure. There, I'm sh- I'm sure there is one. There's got to be a Bleach podcast. Yeah. But um, I can't think of anything more about Frisky Dingo. Doesn't I mean? Oh, I do think that like, I do like. Like I said, I like how this show is very leftist. I like how it's just about like it's about it, rich, rich people being dicks. Yeah, it's about rich people being dicks and about like not having health insurance and about like being poor. We didn't talk at all about what's his name, Stan. Stan. And then the Harumph clones. We didn't talk at all about oh, that. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the Harumph clones were big for me, too. I love the Harumph clones. I love Stan. Um, he's they're fucking... Eat, they're cannibals. That's, yeah, that's they're, <laughs> I mean, they don't talk about it either. They, it just happens. Like, Stan kills one they of the clones. They just and they fucking eat them. Like, Stan kills one of the clones, and it goes off screen, and they eat it. And then also, um, like, it eats Xander Cruz's ear in one scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stan's do. a great character. They he's modeled after Adam Reed's dad, which is very funny. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I love Stan. He's very funny. He's, he's one of the few characters that <laughs> lives to the end, actually. But um, <laughs> so many spoilers, dude. Stan's a great character. I also love Kill Faces. I mean, Xander Cruz is like, yeah, I actually got to go kill Stan because like his he's because he just like. He gets – it's really funny that he gets, like, just reincorporated back into the fold in season two where he just plays the exact same role that he did where he's just, like, kill faces – he's just, like, Xander's, like, advisor again. Yeah, that's but, funny. Because, like <laughs> – because he's just, like, an idiot. He's not going to, like, fire Stan. Like, he has no one else in his life. He's not going to fire him. So right. his, Stan is just, like, back to, like – it, they just kind of reset it for season two because they have like a bunch more shit to go on. Yeah, they're like, fuck it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's it's a great show. But we can probably um, wrap this up. Yeah, go see Megan. She's going to be yeah. out of the theaters by the time Oh, yeah, comes go, out, but still. go stream Megan on like Shudder or whatever the fuck. Fucking, it's good. I doubt it's a Shudder film. It's it's not like a it's not like a horror movie. It's a comedy. Yeah, but no, I mean, but I feel like, I don't know, horror, all horror stuff is on Shudder. Also, um, Skin Ring. Well, yeah, Skin and Marink, Skin and Marink is a Shutter original. Not fucking watching that. You couldn't pay me. Skin and Marink, I think Skin and Marink interests me because it is very much, um, very much like uh, like Wham City type horror, like some people in it type horror. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, also, one more Adult Swim related thing to Skin and Marink is, um, have you ever seen the Brood Witch episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force? What happens in it? It's the one with the evil sandwich, and if you take a bite of it, it transports you to, like this hell dimension. I may have actually. And it's like the whole episode is just like this disembodied voice being like, come on, take a bite. And it's like, I, I feel come like, to me I feel and like, taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I've seen that. And someone posted on Twitter today, um, 
in this house. <laughs> yeah, so I posted on Twitter. It was like, what would happen if the like, what would happen if the awkward thing Number Force got into a skin and situation? And I quote tweeted and said, "That's just the Brood Witch episode because it I is." I saw that tweet. I saw yeah, because it is because the skin and is just like a voice telling these kids to do fucked up shit, and that's just what would happen. Like it was, it was just it was just the Brood Witch episode, but yeah, Ooh. yeah. No, um, first thing I'm good. First thing was amazing. Scream Megan. Uh, Scream Megan when it comes out. Um, Scream Skin and Rink. And tell me how it is, because I'm not going to watch it. Um, watch the Venture Brothers. Uh, that's I'm probably going to end every episode by saying um, watch the Venture Brothers, because it's everything good about modern media. And it's the perfect show, and I love it. Um, so I'm going to – so you can follow me on Instagram, see all the shit merch that I talk about at Adult Swim Merch Ar- Archive, yeah, like under, underscore under every word. Um, you can the follow, Adult Swim Merch Archive? Yeah. There you go. You can follow um, our Twitter account at Owls Only Pod on Twitter. You can follow my Twitter account at um, Mouse Fitzgerald without the D. Yeah. Or it's, I'm probably my screen name is just like Bryce number six or seven streams fan. Um, you want to plug anything? Um, no, I'm thinking we'll make a YouTube channel for this too though. Because especially once we move out, we'll, we'll record these yeah. with the camera. And yeah. And we'll, we'll upload those. So. All right. We'll see you next time. See ya.